live in the luckiest time in history. But those medicines which offer to cure our sicknesses and relieve our pain have at some point to be tested on humans. But where? Who wants to be a guinea pig? Pharmaceutical companies have been solving that problem by piling into India. Hundreds of the Indians who took part have died during trials and very few autopsies have been carried out to determine the cause of death. Doctors have been fined and now the Indian government is seriously considering tightening up the rules. Sue Lloyd Roberts reports from the poverty-stricken state of Madhya Pradesh. Some locals call it neo-colonialism. Foreign drug companies using poor and illiterate Indians as guinea pigs in drug trials. Our family has been destroyed by this, and the drug company should know it. The doctors who carry out the trials may be in denial. But they're now being disciplined. And lawyers are asking if we can trust the results of the trials. The global implications potentially would be whether those uh, findings can be safely relied upon. India has obvious attractions for the foreign drug company. The cost here can be half that in the West. There are educated, English-speaking doctors and a vast population from which to choose trial subjects, all of whom are required under Indian law to give their informed consent. I put my thumbprint on the document and my daughter-in-law signed in Hindi, but the form was in English and so we couldn't understand anything. But that was enough for a three-day-old healthy boy to be given a trial polio vaccine. He had a seizure, which was recorded as a severe adverse event by the hospital. Four years later, his family say he still has breathing and eating problems. Baby Naresh is one of more than 80 patients who, the records show, were severely affected in the trials in the town of Indore most of which took place here at the main MY hospital. The families of the dozens who died might have never known their loved ones were ever on a trial were it not for a doctor here at the hospital who turned whistleblower. They recruit uh, clinical trial subjects only from poor and illiterate society because they don't know the meaning of clinical trial. These doctors, uh, uh, they are making money and they earn huge amount from the pharma companies. They are interested only in money. After he challenged his colleagues, he lost his job at the hospital. I set out to find some of the families of those who've died. There have been local investigations into the deaths, but there have been no autopsies, so there can be no certainty that the drug trials are to blame and there's been no compensation for the families. One thing that all of them are agreed on, none of the trial subjects knew they were being given experimental drugs. The death of Chandra Kalabai during a trial has, says her family, left them destitute. When she went into the hospital with chest pains, the 45-year-old was the main breadwinner. Normally, when we go to the hospital, we're given a five rupee voucher. But they said they would give my mother in law a foreign drug costing 125,000 rupees. I was surprised. We are from a low caste, so this was really expensive treatment for the likes of us. But her mother in law reacted so badly during the drug trial that she was taken off it and she died a month later. The trial, which was registered in the UK by the drug company Biogen IDEC, was later halted, due, say the company, to the number of seizures recorded. The family blame her death on the doctor who carried out most of the trials at the hospital, Dr. Anil Barani. As I visited more families, I found people here no longer have an unquestioning faith in the medical profession. Imata Srivas also took her husband to the hospital with chest pains. She too was pleasantly surprised at how they were treated by Dr. Anil Barani. 
He said, you're poor. That's why I'm paying for your transport costs to come and collect the medication. I know you can't afford it. But when her husband died, Dr. Barani blamed her for failing to give him the correct dose, which she denies. I treated Anil Barani as a god and begged him to look after my husband, but I now know that my husband died because of the drug trial and I don't trust him anymore. I'm even afraid of going back to the hospital. Dr. Anil Barani refused my request for an interview, so I went to the hospital to find him. The state government have charged him with unlawfully accepting money and trips abroad from foreign drug companies and for carrying out trials without consent. Let's go and talk to Dr. Brani. Uh, Dr. Brani. When I arrived at his office, closely followed by security guards, he was not in the mood for talking. Dr. Brani, can we talk to you at another time? This is an offense. You are shooting me with camera. Please, you are doing this is an offense. You are doing the wrong thing. This is an offense. Tell you. Well, that was my attempt to talk to Dr. Barani, who has been top of the list as far as the allegations over the drug trials is concerned. Little wonder he's a little media shy. So who is in charge of the doctors? Dr. Bhargav is head of the ethics committee, whose job it is to approve and to supervise drug trials at MY Hospital. So how did it all go wrong? We never say that we are infallible. Our limitations are known to us, to everyone around. Suddenly, because there is a lot of money being poured at... Are you saying you're losing control? In a way, yes. From what is coming up and what is expected of an ethics committee, we may have lost control. But it's not just a hospital here in Indore. A recent parliamentary report suggests that the entire country could be losing control over drug trials, not least because India has only half the number of qualified drug inspectors needed to cope with demand. Still in the state of Madhya Pradesh, I left Indore to find more irregularities in the conduct of trials in the town of Bhopal a town whose name will forever be linked with the world's worst industrial accident, when an explosion at the Union Carbide plant caused some 20,000 deaths. The only good thing to come out of the disaster was this, a state-of-the-art hospital built as part of a compensation agreement. The Bhopal Memorial Hospital was built to treat those who were still suffering from the disaster. Some half a million locals were affected. But little did they know that when they came to the hospital, some of them would be used for India's clinical drug trials. Yeah. Ramadar Shivastav told me his sight was damaged in the accident. Five years ago, he suffered a heart attack and went to the Memorial Hospital. His discharge paper shows that he was part of a trial by a British company. AstraZeneca admit that routine monitoring revealed a few of the trial subjects had not given proper consent, but say that Shavistav was not one of them. He says he was not told about the trial and that it affected him badly. No, I haven't heard of AstraZeneca, but I want to say this to them. Please don't do these trials on poor people. Rich people can overcome problems, but if I can't work, the whole family suffers. Why did they choose us? Why indeed? Professor Mishra helped set up the Memorial Hospital and served on the Ethics Committee. These trials are carried out for the, for the benefit of those individuals who are suffering from particular disease and there is a drug which can give them relief. But haven't these people suffered enough already? They have survived one of the worst industrial accidents in history and now they're being put at risk in a drug trial. The way you are talking, you would block the development of medicines for all times to come. But why choose gas victims? Can you ever, ever find out that this drug is likely to carry it to produce such a side effect without using it? But why choose gas disaster? That question survivors? I cannot answer. 
because that was not my job to find out. Tajun Prajapati's father was also a gas victim who was given drugs by the hospital after a heart attack. When his father ran out of the drug called Thonda Palinux, Prajapati tried to buy some more. I went to the market to buy them, but I was told they were only available from the hospital. And only then did I realize he was on a drug trial. I feel very bad that my dad died because of those drugs. This claim is impossible to verify because, again, there was no autopsy. On the trial document, it says that the British company, GlaxoSmithKline, are the sponsors, are responsible, and are the investigators for the trial. But GSK told us that they bought the rights to the drug while the trial was being carried out by a French company called Zanofi, named as collaborators on the document. Zanofi told us that the trial was in fact conducted through an Indian research organization called Quintiles. The drug trial setup can be complicated. Drug companies might team up with medical research bodies and they will delegate the work to what in India are called clinical research outsourcing companies. When there have been allegations of malpractice in the past, the drug companies have tended to put the blame on those local companies. It is well nigh impossible for the subjects of drug trials across India to seek compensation. Lawyers are now talking about vicarious liability. I met a British barrister who's here to look into it. He had just got hold of a damning parliamentary report which claims that some doctors carrying out drug trials, the so-called experts, had simply signed the opinions written by the invisible hand of drug manufacturers. There are real concerns about, at the very least, collusion between uh, experts and the drug manufacturers, and at worst, it's suggesting that there is a, a fraud that's taking place, that these um, reports are being signed off without any independent clinical uh, scrutiny of their findings and the way in which uh, conclusions have been expressed. The drug companies argue that they carry out many trials in different countries concurrently. But by the end of this year, thousands of people in India would have taken part in trials and their reaction, real or otherwise, would have been taken into account. Two days after my encounter with Dr. Anil Barani, I read that he'd been transferred from MY Hospital. Nearly every day, the papers expose more of the scandal, which does little to comfort those who may never know why their loved ones died and for whom compensation is a remote prospect. Sue Lloyd Roberts reporting. Now, AstraZeneca have told us that in conducting clinical trials,